uh, just in the middle of having a conversation about um, an incident that happened around uh, children with pacifiers. So that's what started this dialogue. So talk to talk to us a little bit more about that. So we have Bonnie Pridgen, who is a really early, early childhood education educator. And we have Deborah Coleman, who is, once the children get older and they're in their formative years, and here we have Deborah Harrison, who are seeing these adults, young adults, um, in the college setting. So talk to us about that, um, about the subject matter here. Well, I find in my 34 years of experience with infants and toddlers uh, that if children get addicted to calming themselves down with pacifiers after the age of one, that the age of one is a cutoff time when they naturally can transition to something eating. And uh, then they're not addicted emotionally to something outside of themselves to calm them down. And then they're searching and getting angrier and angrier when they try to convey something to you. That um, And then they cry about it. Like you're supposed to know. Bleh. What I find is that they need to learn to use words because that's the formative years of instead of having the pacifier, they need to learn to talk. And, um, and the consequences of having a pacifier is there it's something external not internal and they don't even know they have the power to calm themselves down without it and i believe it it sets an emotional tone of neediness and emptiness in their bodies for the rest of their lives and it starts with overeating sugary foods it, smoking is an addiction hand mouth addiction Drinking is another hand-mouth addiction. Um, lots of other things that can be the same thing that they go outside of themselves for comfort. Um, and she see... Yeah. I see them at the teenage, preteen, teenage age, and they have developed it to the point that they have given up all their power as far as being able to personally control their emotions and um, everything is based on how happy or how sad they are is based on something external uh, they can't see from within themselves how they can uh, be content or be happy without external wow. stimulation and uh, if they don't get it then they tend to start to either shut down <clears throat> or they strike out mm -hmm. and they learn these habits and they think the world is that way and there's no other alternative so they develop the victimized or I am the victim mentality and mm -hmm. that goes with them for the rest of their lives too. Mm -hmm. Okay and so then now they're young adults Yeah, you've got young adults in there. I work at the community college level so I see students who are anywhere from 17 to 70 and what's interesting to me is when I see the young adults now, they either have a very uh, deep sense of entitlement or they are just very, um, just very out of it. Um, the entitlement ones that I see tend to be, uh, have, a, uh, have some very deep anger issues, which I can understand now could very well be related to you know, mm -hmm. very you know, very early on, not developing um, that sense of internal calmness, sense, calmness, mm -hmm. and never really having words or anyone to even process it with. You know, right. a lot of this stuff just goes unprocessed. Yeah, I find that to be the biggest case of all is yeah. someone that's the adult in their environment is not there to process it for them mm -hmm. to straighten it out. And the, the part you said about entitlement, mm -hmm. that starts early on too because because they've been artificially stimulated, mm -hmm. they've never had to accept responsibility for themselves. For themselves yes. And they have been taught that everything they get is to be given to them and they're supposed to get it. 
So if they don't get it, then that's where the anger comes. Mm -hmm. They're angry with the world. You're my mother. You're supposed to do this for me. Mm -hmm. uh, you're the teacher. You're supposed to do this for me. Mm -hmm. This is the government. You're supposed to do. And so they have no responsibility for mm -hmm. self. Mm -hmm. And they've never been taught it or ne they've never learned it. So then they uh, feel helpless. Helpless, right? Yep. Powerlessness. Yes. yes. But you also have the what we term, there's a term called dumb downness. I think those are the ones that tend to shut down. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, rather than get angry, they just have a sense of just, you know, just being a non-human being. You know? Worthlessness. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's a interesting spectrum. So what's the solution here? What's how do you, how do we shift the paradigm and to change all this? Uh, uh, certainly from an early childhood perspective, but also once they're getting up there in, in their learning development, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the solution? Helping them, for me, it's helping them identify their emotions and uh, processing it out for them. Oh, this is the words that you want me to do. This is what you want, and these are the words you want me to do. Speak for you. Then I speak them, and then over and over... And that calms them down, like, oh, I've been heard. I've mm -hmm. been understood. Good point. And then when they get older, they automatically learn how to do that themselves. Like, they see their feelings and they know what they are. Oh, I'm doing this. Okay. <sighs> we take a deep breath and let it go. Shake it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing now. <laughs> once they get to... Um, a middle school, high school, uh, my role is to show them who they are and that uh, to reacquaint them, I try to reacquaint them with themselves and uh, model how they can take their power back, that they have power and that they can take the power back and be responsible and be their own creator mm -hmm. to create their lives rather than be the victim. So that's what I strive to do in teaching my kids. Mm -hmm. And I reinforce the fact that when they get angry, it's like, no, I'm here to help you, to guide you, not do it for you. So whatever words they weren't given early on, mm -hmm. I introduce words to them to help them to say, okay. To reframe it. To reframe yep. it, yeah. Ooh, I got that energetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Shake it out. Shake it. That's shake what I'm going to tell them. Just shake, shake it. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're fine. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. That's good. I love it.